One of the goals of the instruction offered on this website is to acquaint each student with the writings of those men whose books constitute a rich gold mine of biblical truth. Along the way, specific reading assignments will be suggested, and the first of those assignments will bring the student into contact with a man by the name of Professor John Murray. Professor Murray was a native of Scotland, educated in Scotland and then also in part at Princeton here in the States, and then eventually spent the majority of his life laboring as an instructor in Westminster Theological Seminary near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And Professor Murray's book that was a tremendous help to me when I was struggling with the whole question of what exactly is involved in God's salvation in Jesus Christ, there fell into my hands a paperback by Professor Murray entitled Redemption Accomplished and Applied. And that book has become literally a lifetime companion. After I began to make regular visits to the United Kingdom and made some very deep friendships, one of the men who became a very close friend, knowing my love for that book, presented me in 1972 with this red leather covered edition of Redemption Accomplished and Applied. And because I read and reread and reread some of the chapters, it's traveled with me all over the world and the spine is worn down thin on my lovely redemption accomplished and applied. But not only was I helped, greatly helped by the reading of that book, but God in his providence gave me the opportunity to become personally acquainted with Professor Murray. That acquaintance began in 1967 when I was preaching at a student retreat of the students of Westminster Theological Seminary and Professor Murray and several of the other faculty members were present. As a result of that exposure to my ministry, he very kindly wrote to Ian Murray, who was the chief editor of the Banner of Truth magazine and a leader in the overall work of the Banner of Truth and also their annual conference held in Leicester in England, Professor Murray wrote to Ian Murray and said to him that if I were to be invited to minister at that conference, it was his counsel to Ian Murray that I be given the evening sessions. Well, I did have the privilege of ministering at that conference, and that's when I saw something of the genuine humility and spiritual disposition of this godly man. Here he was, recognized by many as one of the, if not the, outstanding exegetical theologian, that is, a theologian who drew his theology from the text of Scripture. And in the course of that conference, he spoke to me and spoke to Ian Murray, saying, Look, I have another session to give, that is, Professor Murray did, but he said, Mr. Martin is saying things so critical to these ministers, I insist that you allow me to yield my fourth or third lecture to Mr. Martin. My lecture can wait for another time. His preaching is needed now. And here this godly, seasoned saint of God, well into at that time his mid-60s uh, or so, was deferring to this young 34-year-old buck who had just barely come to grips with the precious truths that are the heritage of the Reformed faith. And in those conferences there was opportunity to have interaction with him 
and some of the incidents that we have shared, I have shared with others, are of a very humorous nature, though when he stood to minister the word of God, there was no carnal humor. He abominated that, though in interpersonal relationships he was warm, he was engaging, and above all, he deeply loved the Savior. I can never forget one of the last sermons I heard the man preach, that he preached at the time, I think he was 72, and he preached like a 30-year-old man, paced up and down, opening up the scriptures. I'll never forget the text. It was Romans 8 and verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? And so I'm very thankful that God gave me that opportunity for real, although limited, interaction with that dear man of God, but something of the fragrance of his life, as it were, comes oozing out of the pages when I read his works, making it all the richer to my own heart. God was pleased to allow him to be afflicted with a very aggressive cancer that in a relatively short time took his life and brought him home to glory in 1975. However, since then, many of the manuscripts that he left in perfect cursive handwriting were behind for others to take and reproduce so that there are now four volumes of what is called the Collected Writings of John Murray, a wonderful storehouse of biblical truth, reviews of certain books that were released in his lifetime that he was asked to critique. There is a marvelous collection of sermons that he preached, and so we trust that students who do any learning on this website will themselves eventually become men who appreciate the writings of Professor John Murray and perhaps this little biographical sketch of my interaction will make him not all the way but somewhat of a living teacher to you and that you by the grace of God would follow in his steps not only in the theology he believed and preached but in the Christ-like life that he lived and in the hope of Christ in which he died.